Welcome back to Bearcat Update. March has finally came along and with March comes Selection Sunday. The beautiful day for college basketball fans to sit down with their brackets and decide who's going to be who and what team is taking the national championship this year. Now as you heard earlier, I said the word fan. And if the word fan didn't pop up the name Nate Moore, then I really don't think you know this guy. Here's Nate with the 2007 Picks of Glory. Last week on Bear Cut Update, I sat down with Ryan Davis and we talked about who we thought the number one seeds going into the big tournament were going to be. But last night, they were official. Kansas, North Carolina, Ohio State, and Florida moved up. The big team, as we look at the bracket here, that got in was UCLA. Last week, Ryan said he thought UCLA was going to be number one. But their quick exit in their tournament made them a number two seed. So a big surprise there is UCLA falls to number two seed. And they go against Weber State their first round. I don't see UCLA going out that quick in the first round, but UCLA is a team that has fallen down hard as of late. So I don't look for them to go very far. Let's take a look at Florida's path. Florida has a very easy, easiest path of all the other four teams to possibly repeat. Florida has to go against Jackson State the first round. After that, they play the winner of Arizona and Purdue. Both teams have lost 10 or more games this season, so Florida, a very good chance of coming back and repeating. Texas is stuck in a bad spot. After losing the Big 12 tournament to KU on Sunday, they had a 22-point lead and collapsed at the end. But Texas is in the same area as North Carolina, and that is not good, folks. North Carolina has played very good here of late. Tyler Hansborough, even though he broke his nose, has still came back with a vengeance. He's playing great defense, and North Carolina is going to make some noise. Also, let's jump around a San Antonio spot where Ohio State goes against Central Connecticut. Everybody from ESPN says Ohio is probably the best-built team as long as Greg Oden can stay up with all, his, with all his players and keep passing the ball around. Greg Oden has been a dominating force. Texas A&M also made it in from the Big 12. They are a third seed as they will take on Pennsylvania. A great game right there. So from the Big 12, a lot of teams, Texas Tech, Texas, Texas A&M, and KU, all hoping to make some noise in the Big 12 tournament. Enjoy March Madness, and for Bearcat Update, I am Nathan Moore. One of our very own crew members, Phil Meyer, went out and captured some students on campus playing soccer. But the cool thing about this is these are international students, which I didn't know what that word meant until third grade. It means all over the world. Here's Phil. Friday night, I found myself in the Martindale gym for the weekly ISO student soccer game. Sorry. This is for international um, no, no, no. sessions activities. Yeah. We have like once once weekend activities. So we reserve the hall just for us to play basketball, volleyball, soccer. But mainly we play soccer because most of them interested in soccer. While the international students organization hosts the event, it's not just limited to ISO members. Oh, anybody. Everybody is welcome. Anybody can join us. This actually, this is my second time. I've been here like for for the first time two weeks ago, and I liked it a lot. This was like ISO soccer, mm -hmm. like playing on Friday night. I never came, and a friend of mine, he was like, "That's ISO, and why don't you come?" I'm a secretary of ISO, so I decided to come last like two weeks ago, and I enjoyed it. I came back. Friday nights are simply an opportunity for people ranging in experience levels to get together and enjoy a game. We're gonna, uh, we just we used to split a team, like three teams or four teams, and then like tournament, something like that. Just we just pick some good players, then they're gonna pick some some up randomly. ISO gets together every Friday night at Martindale Gym at eight o'clock. For Bearcat Update, this is Philip Stewart Meyer. What do you do here? Um, I'm the uh, host for Bearcat Update. Uh, I don't know why they picked me. I'm kind of a fool. But maybe they were going for that. But like, we want some really weird guy uh, to get up and talk about sports on our show. And I'm just proud to be that guy. So I, I used to do stuff on camera. Um, back of stuff. I used, to, I used to do sports on camera uh, back in high school. 
uh, and it's, I'm a sophomore now, this year is my second semester, and so it's been a good year and a half before I've been on camera. And like, you think it's easy from home, but it's, it's once you get on camera and you get the lights on you, uh, it's actually a pretty tough job to do to read from that prompter and try to look like you're, you're speaking, and you're not just uh Hi, my name is Joe. And so that's been a challenge personally. Well, um, I'm the co-host for Bearcat Update. I work behind Joe Mosavecchio. Um I also do a couple uh, side stories. I do a lot of interviews for Bearcat Update. Talk to Matt Withers. I've talked to, you know, a lot of, you know, just some sports athletes here. Bearcat update, and yeah, it's a couple hours. I would say probably two, three hours. I sometimes come in and help him set up the lights, kinda it takes a lot of time. Oh, the biggest benefit is just that on camera experience. I I'm probably not gonna go um, into anything uh, where I'm probably gonna be on a camera. I'm thinking about just going into sales. Um, but if, if, especially for uh, people who get on the show and they, if they want to do behind the scenes work or if they want to do on camera work, this is what it is. You know, you get on camera. I did a couple internships back when I thought about being an anchor to where I watch them. They sit down at a desk and they read from a prompter. And on this show, you're not sitting at a desk, you're standing, but you're doing the same thing. You're reading from a prompter and uh, you're just trying to make sure you give the people their sports. Otherwise, people are going to take you out, you don't mess around with the people. The best part of it is sports. Um, people want to hear about sports, they want to have fun, they want to be entertained, because that's what sports is. It's uh, the opportunity for people to go out there, show off their talents, and have a great time, and that's what you get to do with the sports. We don't have to do the kind of things that like a, uh, a new show usually has to do, where they have to talk about some pretty sad news all the time. You just come in, and it's, uh, it's very upbeat type of environment, very fun, a lot of good things to talk about, and so it's kind of like a playground a little bit. Coming up on Bearcat Update, pitcher for the Bearcat baseball team, Brett Harville, is in the studio, so stay with us. BCU is coming right back. <laughs> 